It's Saturday morning. I'm laying in bed, scrolling. And an email rolls in from an unknown sender named Snaz. <laughs> What's your fantasy? C confused and a little afraid, I screenshot it and send it to Jeff. Is this you? He and I are already texting about my recent confession about wanting to hook up with him. It feels strange that he's emailing me from this alias when we're already texting, but I quickly push that thought out of my head. I am so close to getting what I've wanted for the past year. A chance to hook up with my dark and witty apartment manager. who also happens to be 20 years older than me. <laughs> Living across the hall from each other in downtown Long Beach, we'd smoke weed and play video games when his girlfriend was away. Fascinated by his playful and dynamic energy, I could not stop thinking about him. My attraction to him was primal. But we also connected on a spiritual level that I was missing with my peers. I was developing a serious crush. Jeff confirms he is snaz and emails again. Have you ever done role play? Would you ever dress up for your boyfriend? I choose an answer no he'll like in hopes of getting what I want. Well, I guess I've been interested in the whole daddy thing. <laughs> Thinking this purely meant calling him daddy during sex. <laughs> and that is how, at 21 years old, I'm thrust into a life of 24-7 DDLG role play. <laughs> DDLG. Daddy, dumb, little girl lifestyle is a subset of the BDSM community focusing on consensual power dynamics in a caregiver little framework. It's supposed to hinge on nurturing dynamics where a daddy, dom caregiver provides guidance to the little girl who receives care. I was a stranger to this world. But I was a curious seeker on a quest to rebel, still maintaining the good girl image while underneath sinking my teeth into something thrilling. In Jeff's fantasy, my role as his daughter <laughs> was to cater to his sexual needs. I'd call him dad or daddy and he'd call me things like honey or sweetheart. We spent all day, every day, engaging in the role play over text and occasionally would bring it to life in person. I was determined to be his dream daughter. Looking back, it was pretty clear that I was doing this to make up for past losses with my own parents. Even though I'd achieved excellence through good grades, athletics, and extracurriculars, it never seemed to be enough growing up. Making matters worse, I spent most of childhood defying t traditional gender roles. Uh, honey, those are the wrong pants. Those are for boys, not girls. Th they just won't look right on you. Mom says to 10-year-old me over and over, I had already spent a decade changing myself to be loved. At the time, I, however, I felt uncomfortable, but also curious. What was this world of role play? What would even happen? You'll be tailored specifically for daddy, Jeff instructs me. Remember, daddy is essentially your master and commander. This is where your training begins. Reading his text aloud to myself in my living room, I ignore the soft voice alerting me that something is off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it makes me feel ashamed. <laughs> it reminds me that I have a choice, so uh, I quickly force it to the background and give in to the curiosity. Jeff continues, this is one of the most exciting experiences you'll have in your life. I am so glad I get to show it to you. I'm hooked. A chance to be the perfect daughter. Legally, I was old enough to consent. Mentally, I did not understand the magnitude of what I was consenting to. No boundaries were discussed. The only thing I was sure of was that I wanted him. Every time I'd ask about his girlfriend and how she felt about our situation, he'd convince me I was paranoid and make me feel guilty for asking. I've already told you. She knows about you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very difficult situation for me to be in. When I'd ask why, he'd respond by changing the subject. Trusting him over myself, I let it go. A centerpiece of our role play became dressing up in outfits he'd pick for me. Already a pro at bending my appearance to fit what others wanted for me, this came naturally. Two years in, we visit his favorite place, Las Vegas. I wear a tight turquoise dress that hugs my curves exactly the way he likes. Peering at myself in the full-length hotel room mirror after a hefty gulp of Smirnoff, he strep strides over, admiring the reflection before us. God damn, baby, you look so good, he says, sliding his hands around my waist before grabbing my ass and squeezing, reminding me that I'm his. Are you ready to go, my baby? Or should we have another drink first? He beckons towards the bottle. I know you've had a lot to drink, but it's okay if you want more. You're with dad. My role as Jeff's daughter is constantly in my mind. Each morning, I wake to, good morning, baby. Daddy loves you and can't wait to come in your mouth later. <laughs> my childhood training and subsequent daughter training had paid off. All I had to do was morph into the exact person he wanted to receive the affection I wanted. Four years in, we have a strong routine. Freshly out of college and living on my own, I'm truly adulting. Visiting Jeff after my nine to five became a weekly occurrence. Following a long work day, I climb into bed with him, safe and protected from the noisy outer world. I grew to cherish my duty to him in exchange for the nurturing parental presence he offered. After doing the deed, he hands me a giant jar of rice, packets of ramen, and a bag of oranges from his family's tree. <laughs> do, do you need more food? <laughs> I'm okay, Dad, thanks. I appreciate him thinking of me and my needs for once, but I also feel a bit uneasy by it. I'm still not used to him considering me as a complete being with needs. Six years in, our communication wanes. We enter an on-again, off-again, long-distance relationship. Ignoring my frequent requests for space, Jeff continues to contact me. I thought that between new partners, living situations, and friends that I'd somehow magically just begin to pull away until I no longer had any interest. But whenever I started feeling sad or lonely, I reached to him for comfort. I felt safe retreating to our custom-built universe. I knew the relationship was toxic for me. I lied to everyone around me maintaining my secret oasis from regular life. I wanted to save it because of the nurturing love and affection he gave that I'd missed out on with my real dad. I wasn't ready to let it go. 
I knew that Jeff was manipulative and that he lied a lot, but I couldn't admit it to myself just yet. One day, he asks how I feel about his coworker, Azalea, coming over to hang out. I can tell that he's trying to make me jealous, playing his games so that I'd want him more. Skeptical, I gather every bit of courage I have and request a screenshot of their conversation. I'm gonna need to see the receipts. My phone lays quiet. 20 minutes later, I receive screenshots of a conversation between Jeff and Azalea. It's almost convincing. Upon closer examination, I discover a misstep in the thread of conversation. A message meant to come from Jeff is texted from Azalea. <laughs> it becomes clear to me that Jeff is actually texting himself. The entire conversation is a fraud, and that's just the last lie I could stomach. <laughs> I've been detoxing from Jeff for the past year. In that time, he's upgraded from three to nine cats, <laughs> and he still emails me. My silence does not deter his persistence. Jeff had the privilege of watching me grow over a six year period, and now I'm enjoying that gift for myself. I cut my hair short, came out as queer, and I love rocking my comfy men's clothes with a touch of dangly earrings. <laughs> yeah. I'm still in constant flux. I don't know where it's all leading, but I trust the version of myself I'll meet on the other side. Thank you. Give it up for Vamp, first timer Kate Cole.